It's time for some real talk, guys. You know Jesus, but does Jesus know you? Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me for your works. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Well, how about that, guys? There's a lot of people out here that know who Jesus is and they have a relationship with Jesus. But does Jesus have a relationship with them? There's a lot of people that say that they are out here doing work for Jesus or working for the kingdom or casting out demons or, you know, prophesying in the name of Jesus. You got to have a little bit of discernment. Well, I'm not even going to say a little bit. You got to have much discernment when it comes to even especially on YouTube. Uh, there's people out here with prophet in their name or prophetess in their name. And I just, you know, I'm not going to say that they're false. I'm not going to say that they're not, you know, doing work for the kingdom of God, because even a false teacher can lead someone to the Lord. Uh, they're not all of their doctrine is going to be false. Not all of their stuff is going to be fake. And um, sometimes, you know, you just don't know the heart behind a person's intentions or their motives. But that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit gives us wisdom. Um, so how do you know if someone's a, a false prophet? How do you know if someone's leading you astray? How do you know if someone's just using the Bible for their own personal gain? Because trust me, there are many. Just look at politics. You know, a lot of those politicians say that they're believers and they're not. Um, we just need to let the Holy Spirit guide us. Have word knowledge. Don't just read the word, but let it soak in. Meditate on it. Understand what the word actually means. Use Bible resources like the Blue Letter Bible, which is what I what I got this um, verse these verses from. It will help you. You can use it to understand what the word truly means. And there's tools that are built in. So that way you can understand what the word truly means. Uh, you can see the Greek. You can um, <clears throat> you can see the Greek of it. You can get cross references, commentaries, dictionaries and all types of stuff. And it's going to help you go further. Get a study Bible. Understand what the, the text, the, the footnotes at the bottom of the page. All this stuff down here, that's all additional commentary that's going to help you understand the Word of God. So that way, when somebody comes on screen and they get to talk in some gibberish, you, you see right through it. Like, I didn't listen to this mumbo jumbo. You know, you'll have word knowledge. You'll have head knowledge. You'll have heart knowledge, most of all. In your spirit, it won't, it won't resonate well with you. When someone's up here talking about this prosperity gospel, so into the ministry and you'll get a blessing. That's false, guys. There's no promise in the Bible that if you give money, you'll receive money. It's not promised that. The Bible, let's just type it in. Bible verse about receiving blessings. Okay, so we got a few that pop up. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. James 1 17 says every good and per every good and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of lights, which whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Luke 6 38 give and it will be given to you a good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. And what that means is like, say someone gives me this bowl right here, right? And it's overflowing. So you press it down. And then you shake it together to make sure that it settles even more. And then you put more in there and it is poured over, running over into your lap. So back in the day, they would take their, their garment, like a robe or whatever, and they would hold the, the measure into their garment and then it would be shaken over. And they would literally be walking with grain or whatever they were weighing up into their, their measure. All right. Now, while it says that you can have blessings, it never specifies that you will get monetary reward from from tithing the the bible does say that your barns and your vats will be overflowing but that doesn't promise that it will be a monetary gain so when you got someone out here saying give to this ministry and you'll be financially set false doctrine don't fall for it when you give you're supposed to be a cheerful giver right do it as unto the lord because it's his 10 percent anyway so uh, another way that you can tell that someone's a false doc uh, has false doctrine is when it just honestly just doesn't align with what the Bible says. 
Uh, if it's a newer form of religion catered to a specific agenda, that's going to be a false doctrine, right? So you're going to have these prophets out here that come and they, you know, pro prophesy in the name of the Lord. Or they say, thus says the Lord, but not everybody that says that are really, real, uh, really being used by the Lord. Just use discernment, guys. Use wisdom. And then when it comes down to it, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. Ask if the word is real, run it alongside scripture, and it'll, it'll start to make sense. Um, but then you're going to have people out there that are doing work for the kingdom because the Bible says without faith or faith without works is dead, right? So just because you get saved doesn't mean you don't have to do anything, right? That's where you get your reward from. Your reward in heaven comes from the works you've done after you got saved. You don't, there is not required, but if you want a blessing in heaven, I suggest you do some work for the kingdom. What does that look like? That means, you know, helping the needy, uh, praying for the sick, casting out demons. If, if you if you feel led to do that type of ministry, cast out demons, pray for the sick, pray for healing. You know, that that's true. And, and this stuff happens still in this day. Cessationists say it doesn't work. It doesn't happen anymore. I just don't believe that. I prayed for a buddy of mine one day. His stomach was hurt. You know, I put my hand on his stomach and I prayed for him. He hasn't been sick since. It's not me that did it. But the Holy Spirit moving through me because my faith was high in that moment. Uh, another buddy, his daughter, um, she's been having seizures. I prayed for his daughter, laid hands on her. I put my hand on her shoulder and prayed for her. She hasn't had a seizure since I prayed for her. Um, another friend of mine, well, the same the same guy. I prayed for him. And um, just to, to be able to have boldness and courageousness to speak to his coworkers on a construction site that does concrete work. These dudes don't care about Jesus. And he's trying to be the light in that in that workplace. And I pray for him to have boldness and talk to the people that were persecuting him about Jesus. And now, you know, they don't persecute him anymore. And they actually ask him questions about Jesus. How powerful is that? Now, I'm not saying I had anything to do with this, but we have to be the vessels to be uh, used by the Holy Spirit, to be able to spread God's message in a place where it just ain't going to be received. So um, I just pray that you guys have courage and wisdom and boldness. I pray that you do use discernment and uh, practice, you know, running everything that you hear along with scripture. Sometimes people are just going to make a mistake. You know, it's not always intentional. Sometimes it's not always even known that the person is doing it. A person can be zealous for the Lord and still make mistakes. So just don't go ahead and start throwing false teacher at everyone. Right. Sometimes it's an honest mistake. Sometimes it's a lack of knowledge. I will make mistakes on this channel. I will lack knowledge until until I die. I'll never know everything. Right. Because God will reveal everything to us when we pass away and we go to heaven. But until then, we're all on a journey of sanctification. None of us are perfect. All of us will make mistakes. But Jesus is the perfect one who never made a mistake, never sinned, never did anything wrong. So as long as we continue to try to imitate Jesus in this life, we will be able to do the best that we can, but we will never get it right. So um, I just pray that this message has encouraged you today. Um, I pray that this message provides some type of wisdom for you today. Practice discernment. Don't take everything as truth. Um, run it by the word of God, because that is the only unchanging truth. So that's going to do it for this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then, God bless.